Hello, everyone. Um, I'm Steve Papa, a first year PhD student in Symbios Laboratory. And today I will present you one of uh, the challenges of my PhD project, which deals with the texturing of titanium dental implants thanks to femtosecond laser in order to give it uh, antibacterial properties. So uh, you may ask why we are focusing on bacteria. The fact is that uh, perimplantitis, which is a consequence of bacterial infection, is the first reason for implant failure. And it is partially due to the fact that biofilm formation, uh, which is otherwise um, the bacterial adhesion to the implant, will introduce ribocorrosion, which is the degradation of the titanium that will release particles leading to uh, even more biofilm formation. And those both phenomena will stimulate uh, immune system activity, which will result in uh, tissue remodeling and resorption, and so the loosening of the implant. So in order to improve implant success, but also implant lifetime, different issues are, are identified depending on the implant level. So, okay. Uh, depending on the implant level. So, um, for example, the antibacterial properties are important on the whole implant, but uh, in the midline part, for example, the implant also need to be pro for gingival tissues. Whereas for the lower part of the implant, the main objective is to induce osteogenic differentiation, but actually the lower part of the implant is, is um, a part of the postdoctoral project, not mine, it's, uh, soon, and I'll be working with. And in my project, I'm looking to reduce uh, biofilm formation by using titanium topography to reduce the areas of contact between bacteria and titanium surface. So, in order to do that, I use the femtosecond laser technology, which, uh, compared to other strategies, do not use drug coating, which is really good. Um, it's a positive aspect in the antibiotic uh, resistance struggle. Other advantages are the use of a unique tool, uh, which creates implants that are easily sterilizable. And so, as, as I just said before, the, the main objectives are to increase implant success, but also implant lifetime thanks to femtosecond laser texturing, which is made possible thanks to the variety of laser parameters that give us access to a large panel of texturing. So at the moment, there are only few works dealing with laser texturing against biofilm formation, and all of them are focused on um, infrared laser. Uh, here we can see a study realized on infrared uh, lips, so laser induced uh, periodic spectral surfaces, um, which have been shown to be pro adhesive for the bacterium uh, Staphylococcus aureus, uh, sorry, uh, but anti adhesive for um, Escherichia coli, which is of a bigger size than Staphylococcus aureus. Uh, sorry, as we are working with bacteria from the all bi microbiota that are known to be responsible for of parent entities. Uh, we have firstly tried to reproduce this experiment with one of those bacteria, which is uh, and infrared lips. So uh, here we can see um, our result. Uh, we have made the observation that this kind of texturing is quite easy for streptococcus mutants. And this is partially explained by the fact that um, the periodicity of the texturing is close to the bacterium size giving it a large area of contact resulting in a, in a great biofilm formation. The fact is uh, we must find a way to reduce Streptococcus mutans biofilm formation over titanium, uh, as it is one of bacteria of interest. We must adapt our strategy and uh, we need to exploit the femtosecond laser properties combined with uh, magnetic USD knowledge to find a way to impair uh, this biofilm formation. So in order to do that, let us have a non-exhaustive overview of uh, the possibilities we have access to in terms of laser properties modification. First of all, uh, we can change the laser wavelengths uh, that will modify the periodicity of the generated texturing. 
as um, by decreasing the wavelengths from um, infrared to ultraviolet, it will also decrease the period of the lips uh, realizing titanium. It can also modify the polarization of the laser. Uh, this will actually, we have three polarizations that are azimuthal, radial, and linear. And they will generate a different orientation of the texturing. Another parameter that is possible to modify is the number of impacts realized on each area. This parameter is directly linked with the total energy delivered by the laser, and it will um, modify the shape of um, micro texturing. And okay. finally, um, by variating the spatial organization of the impacts, you will modify the shape of the nano texturing. As you can see here, for example, um, the, the first images uh, present less detailed uh, nano textures than the third one. And of course, you can modify um, more than one parameter at once. So at, really, um, at the moment, it's um, only true for infrared uh, laser, but it's only a matter of time. Uh, by the end of the year, we should be able to do it also with green and ultraviolet laser. But we can modify uh, different parameters uh, at the same time, uh, giving us, like I would say, uh, an uncountable number of possibility of texturing. So we have tried to modify infrared laser polarization, as uh, I told you before. Uh, Inia was uh, what is it for this methods of vision. So uh, by doing that, we managed to to obtain an anti-adhesive surface for stereoscopic implants, something which is also visible with um, electronic microscopy images. You can see that uh, bacteria are only present in the mirror polished surface because our texturing impairs their adhesion to the aluminum surface. As I told you before, we can modify more than one parameter. So we try also to um, increase the laser beam impact. And we still had uh, something which is uh, anti adhesive for right? So further, we have increased even more this parameter. And uh, the result was a surface that was um, more adhesive for streptococcus methods. You can see, you can see, for example, on an um, electronic microscopy image, is that we have a big pile of information inside of the texturing. This is really not what we are looking for. So, we have the objective to understand why we have just the anti adhesive properties by increasing these parameters. We have compared uh, three pro adhesive texturing. And here, thanks to the fluorescence intensity, we can clearly see that uh, one of the three. Uh, on the right side of the slide, present lower fluorescent intensity, meaning uh, she has the lower adhesive properties for streptococcus mutants. Uh, what's interesting is uh, when we have a closer look at the texturing, we can see that uh, they all present uh, micro sized uh, texturing, but the third one presents uh, nano texturing, nano side texturing. Um, that are clearly well uh, detailed than uh, the other two. So we had the conclusion that uh, even with what is the texturing, the, um, when we reduce the area of contact by nano texturation, uh, the bacteria are less capable of to adhere to the titanium surface. So with this information in mind, um, I've tested by the information of Tepogokus mutants of an, um, an, an linear texturing, but with a green laser. So uh, we generated uh, lips that are of, of a small size than the bacteria itself. And this, one, this time we had uh, a texturing that is anti adhesive for Tepogokus mutants. Uh, it's from our and now uh, to conclude with the advancements of my project, uh, up to now I've identified that um, infrared lips 
texturing or the infrared texturing on linear texturing. So I've concluded that uh, infrared linear texturing are predictive for stiff local continuous. Whereas when we modify the organization of the infrared texturing by modifying the polarization, we can uh, obtain something that is anti adhesive for stiff local continuous. But if we, by modifying the different laser parameters, we obtain uh, such a sort of micro sized uh, texturing, we, we reverse the anti adhesive properties by creating something which is quite easy for stiff local continuous. And um, uh, we focus on step local kismetans first, but we would like to work also with Sporkler Managed Divalis, which is another bacteria of interest um, in the old microbiota, mainly because it's involved in different pathologies such as um, Alzheimer's disease or rheumatoid arthritis. But uh, we had some issues with the culture of Sporkler Managed Divalis. But uh, now it's okay. So um, I need to, to reproduce the experiment I've done with um, stepper mutants with Porphyrin Nagen Duvalis. And the fact is that Porphyrin Nagen Duvalis is of a smaller size than stepper mutants. So um, um, texturing that are prodigious for mutants should be uh, prodigious for Porphyrin Nagen Duvalis, which is not uh, obviously the case with the uh, anti disease properties. And the next step, so um, we would like to, to, to try um, ultraviolet bits uh, versus tetrabic mutants to go uh, on the small, even smaller side. And uh, I have just told you to test the selected texturing versus the uh, formation device. Uh, and we still have two things, uh, everybody that takes part in this project. And in red, you can see the three postdoctoral uh, that uh, have just been recruited or are going to be recruited by the end of the year. And now, uh, I guess we still have time if you have any questions. I try my best to answer.